The ancient Greeks took a totally different approach to mathematics. Their mathematics was not based on equations, but on geometry. It was the mathematics of physical shapes. The ancient Greeks had a visual approach to mathematics. Plato believed in an ideal Platonic reality that is accessible to the mathematically trained human mind. His view was that the laws of mathematics are true, like the laws of nature. Mathematicians just discover them, but they are pre-existing. Plato believed that our physical world is a dim reflection of some perfect ideal reality. In the theory explained in this video, this ideal platonic reality is continuously coming into existence at the quantum level of the atoms as a process of spherical symmetry forming and breaking. This process of continuous energy exchange is not a process over a period of time, rather it provides the formal basis for time as an emergent property. This theory is quite easy to understand because like the mathematics of ancient Greece, the mathematics represents geometry. The only difference is that it is a interactive dynamic geometry that is continuously coming into existence. I will start with this diagram representing the flow of time. In the top left hand corner we have the equation known as Heisenberg's uncertainty principle with 4 pi representing a sphere. We have 4 pi in this equation because the uncertainty principle is formed by the quantum wave particle function or probability function of quantum mechanics that expands out as an inverse sphere. It would be logical if time was formed by this process that represents the spontaneous absorption and emission of light that time would expand out in every direction in three-dimensional space with the expansion of the universe. But this is not what we observe. Time is two-dimensional with a past and future and a timeline forming an arrow of time that modern physics cannot explain. Almost everywhere else in this diagram we see 2 pi. The reason for this is that equations with 2 pi have cylindrical symmetry, a form of line symmetry. This line symmetry is formed because when light comes in contact with matter it forms a photon-electron coupling and we have matter-antimatter annihilation in just one direction forming the arrow of time in that reference frame. In the lower right hand corner of the diagram we have the Planck constant h over 2 pi representing a constant of action in the dynamic process that forms the arrow of time. Also we see Heisenberg's uncertainty principle reformulated with energy and time with 2 pi representing the timeline instead of 4 pi representing three dimensional space. Note also that the oscillating wave represents harmonic motion and that the equation representing the movement of the pendulum is typical of equations representing the movement of objects with 2 pi representing a universal process of spherical symmetry forming and breaking that we see and feel as the flow of time. This diagram shows a complex plane with the positive and negative numbers and the imaginary numbers going off at right angles with zero in the center. This still represents the geometry of a physical process. The zero represents zero time or t equals zero, the moment of now, formed by light interacting with matter with the positive numbers marching off forming a potential future with a square of probability and the negative numbers receding towards a limitless past representing the positive and negative of electromagnetic waves. In the top left hand corner we have Maxwell's second law with north and south magnetic poles cancelling out equaling zero within a sphere of uncertainty. This forms the continuous flow of electric charge with the movement of electromagnetic fields. The electric fields will always be at right angles to the magnetic fields 
because the momentum of light will always be at right angles to the surface of the sphere. This is represented on the diagram by the imaginary numbers being at right angles to the real numbers. In Maxwell's theory of magnetic fields, any moving charged particle creates a magnetic moment. Because positive and negative charge is an innate part of matter that keeps cancelling out, this process is universal and continuous, forming a continuum of time, moment by moment. On the lower left-hand side of the diagram, we have Dirac's equation, that also equals zero, representing zero time, with matter-antimatter annihilation, forming the magnetic moment, or dipole moment, with the future coming into existence, photon by photon, quanter by quanter. This magnetic moment is formed when light waves interact with matter to form a photon-electron coupling, and the electron is the most spherical object in the universe. This spherical symmetry, or organization, forms the low entropy that creates the possibility for the continuous increase in entropy, or disorganization, that we have in the second law of thermodynamics as time unfolds. As photon energy cascades down, it forms greater degrees of freedom for the increase in entropy, or disorganization, forming the uncertainty of everyday life. In the top right-hand corner of this diagram, we have Euler's identity, the most beautiful equation to come out of the mind of man. But this beautiful equation has no meaning or purpose in modern physics. But in this theory, Euler's identity is interwoven into the dynamic fabric of our universe, with the plus one representing one quanter, or photon, equals zero time, t equals zero, the moment of now. To understand this further, we have to use the next diagram that shows how this spherical symmetry breaks, forming spiral symmetry that has line symmetry for the arrow of time. When the spherical symmetry is broken, it forms spiral symmetry in the form of the Riemann surface rising up out of the complex plane, forming a spiral pattern. Euler's identity is at the heart of this process. The easiest way of looking at this is that the only number you could add to the number 1 to get 0 is minus 1, and this forms a rotation that breaks the spherical symmetry. Also, in mathematics, the imaginary number i is the square root of minus 1. There is no objective understanding to this. You could say that this is just the way mathematics is. But in this theory, the imaginary number i is the square root of minus 1, because it is part of a physical process linked to the square of probability. There will always be uncertainty at the quantum level and in our everyday life, because the imaginary number i is the square root of minus 1, representing the rotational symmetry that maintains the probability function at t equals 0, the moment of now. It may seem at times that the theory is explaining the paradoxes of mathematics rather than the mathematics explaining the theory. This is because human mathematics is based on the dynamic geometry of this theory. This can be seen in the way Euler's identity and imaginary numbers are part of the theory. At each rotation of the origin, 2 pi, cylindrical symmetry has to be added, and we find ourselves on another sheet of the complex plane. This spiral symmetry forms line symmetry, representing the timeline, or arrow of time. The entire spiral pattern is equivalent to a sphere, 4 pi, with a single minimum dynamic origin, formed by spherical symmetry. When the spherical symmetry is broken, it forms the imperfect spiral symmetry of life that is visible in nature. This is because if the quantum wave particle function, or probability function, is reformulated as a linear vector, then all the information I can find says that each new vector is formed by adding the two previous vectors together. This forms the Fibonacci sequence. In this theory, 
we have the Fibonacci numbers in nature, not because of economy of growth or space, but because time and space is being formed by the geometry and therefore the mathematics of this dynamic process. As can be seen on the diagram, we already have zero, representing the moment of now, time equals zero, with positive one and minus one representing the positive and negative of electromagnetic waves. Therefore, we even have the start of the Fibonacci sequence in the diagram. This is linked to Euler's identity, giving this beautiful equation a place in the structure of space and time. In this theory, the Fibonacci sequence can also be mathematically linked to the fine structure constant 137. Richard Feynman, in one of his physics lectures, said that every theoretical physicist is trying to find a reason for the fine structure constant 137. The fine structure constant 137, or the coupling constant C2, is an irrational number that never ends and continues into infinity. This theory predicts that the fine structure constant is a geometrical constant in the physical process that forms the dynamic geometry of space-time and is the size it is because if you take any two consecutive numbers of the Fibonacci series greater than the number 8 and form them into a fraction, if you then multiply by 360 to get 222 and then subtract this from 360 the result will always be 137. It is a constant in the dynamic geometry of space-time. To explain how the probabilistic nature of quantum mechanics can represent the potential possibilities and opportunities of everyday life, we have to use the mathematics of the electromagnetic force that is based on the work of Michael Faraday. Because the light photon of quantum mechanics is also the carrier of the electromagnetic force, this can be seen as one universal physical process. In this diagram, instead of having zero in the center of the diagram representing time equals zero, we have Q representing charge. Instead of having a number line representing the future, we have a test charge represented by a little Q. The future is represented by potential energy in the form of voltage acting on a charge to move the charge from one point to another point. The voltage is the work done to bring a test charge, little q, from infinity all the way into a point that is a distance r away from the main charge q. This gives us a totally objective understanding to electromagnetism. We have to do work by putting energy into something to create the potential of our own future. Because this is a universal process, it must be the same for all electrical activity. Therefore, electrical activity in the brain can be seen as the most advanced part of this universal process. Therefore, conscious thought is always in the moment of now, with a continuous stream of thoughts and ideas that can comprehend this process as time, as an interactive process of continuous creation with a potential future infinity of possibilities. By dumbing down consciousness to the level of electrical activity that is aware of its own electrical potential, we can place the individual observer in the center of his or her own reference frame as an active participant in the dynamics of our universe. Life will create its own ripples in the fabric of space-time as part of one universal process this is true for the smallest creature as it is for the largest planet. Therefore, Newton's universal law of gravity is part of this process. In this theory, Newton's apple does not fall to the ground because of the downward force of gravity, but because of the upward momentum of electromagnetic radiation or light. Gravity is not a real force at all. It is a secondary force to the electromagnetic force. Objects just free fall towards the greatest energy because it has the slowest rate of time or the greatest time dilation. I believe this can be seen in the mathematics with both the gravitational force and the electromagnetic force having the inverse square law. 
We have the inverse square law because the surface area of the light sphere increases with the square of the radius. Thus the strength of the gravitational field is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the source. There is no mysterious action at a distance. The gravitational field will work at the speed of light because it is an integral part of one universal process with the electromagnetic force. We have one universal process that begins with the quantum wave particle function or probability function of quantum mechanics expanding out as an inverse sphere and ends with the inverse square law of gravity and Newton's third law of motion. To every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. Gravity is the opposite reaction to the atoms radiating quantized spherical wave fronts of electromagnetic radiation. So far in this video this theory has been explained using the mathematics that we already have. Now we are going to look at the one new equation this theory is based upon. In this diagram the Lorentz contraction of space and time is between the energy and mass. The greater the energy the greater the time dilation and the slower time will run. Mass will increase relative to this and each reference frame can be seen as a vortex in space formed by the rate the time flows. The C2 is light radiating out in all directions forming a sphere of probability. It is a probability wave of a potential future event and drawing the act of measurement the magnitude squared or C2 gives a probability for different potential future outcomes. The brackets represent the dynamic boundary condition of the reference frame. This is formed by the surface area of the sphere that forms a two-dimensional boundary condition. The infinity symbol represents the whole universe as an infinite number of dynamic reference frames that are continuously interacting, forming the uncertainty of everyday life. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and rate. It will help the promotion of this theory.